La Varinia crossroads were clearly the key to holding Montpensant. Their capture had cost the 5th Wiltshire's 52 killed and 158 wounded. It was vital they, with C Squadron 1318th Hussars, should hold the crossroads at least till the following morning. The troops that were around were all fairly close on, on the ground and when it came to uh, nightfall, I realized that we were going to, if the Germans were infiltrating on the ground, we'd have to dismount somebody from each tank uh, with a machine gun to watch, watch their tanks, which we did. A new colonel, Colonel Bill Roberts, had come from the 4th Somersets and had taken over the battalion that evening. And uh, Bill Roberts and the battery commander, Ted Lacane, uh, sat there all night uh, looking at their map and picking off their map uh, targets which they thought uh, it would be profitable to engage, places where it was thought that the enemy might be forming up, places where they would have to pass through in order to get to a forming up point. And uh, we know from prisoners of war reports that some of those uh, selections of targets were remarkably successful and appropriate. The guns were always laid on an SOS line at night. And as soon as we had the call for uh, fire on SOS, the guns were lo loaded and laid onto a target a special target at night. It could have been anything up there. I mean, it could have been a German machine gun nest or mortar mortar lot. Uh, if they were expecting an attack, where they were going to fire. Uh, they were subjected the most horrendous salvos of gunfire all night. And um, in the morning, a counterattack developed. but appeared that uh, a battalion of Germans had formed up but had been um, uh, uh, partly had lost their way in the fog but also they'd run into one of um, Queedy's DF tasks so only a few got through and they were seen off at hand grenade range. I think I was completely more more concerned with Sergeant Haygarth lined up because it was my tank and Sergeant Hagar, so the only two tanks that could actually line up against this 88. So I was lined up against the 88 and so was Haygarth. And it was all night long, you know, wondering when he's going to appear. And he eventually came out at first light as soon as he could see. And of course Hagarth was ready there and, and drilled him through straight away. At about nine o'clock at night, I was summoned by Delaval Carter and told to take my troop down the road to La Place de Grimaud, round the south side of Montpensant, to see whether there were German troops in that area. And when we came to a point uh, alongside Montpensant, uh, the land to the right opened up into fields and so we left the road and started to travel across the first of these fields. The ground seemed quite hard and uh, uh, no problem to us. But after we'd gone a short way, it was clear that we had arrived in a bog at the end of the field. Two tanks, including mine, uh, became bogged down. And I was, of course, uh, um I suppose a little way behind or somewhere nearby and getting very worried as to what we were going to do because the each troop leader or each sergeant said the Germans are infiltrating on the ground towards one and I thought oh my god you know I'm going to lose the all, all, all my troops there if I'm not very careful but I think there were only actually two troops that were bogged there. And of course we did lose two tanks there. 
Some time later, Della Volcata sent Roddy Norris, who was the second in command of the squadron at that time, uh, to us in the field, and he decided that uh, the tanks were too heavily bogged down to uh, move them, and um, that we would return. Before that happened, and while we were still on the ground and not in the tank, uh, the Germans behind the hedge um, engaged us with a pincer first, knocking out uh, both tanks, and as the crews tried to escape through the top of the turret, uh, they were cut down by machine gun fire. And following this, um, we uh, returned uh, to C Squadron at La Valiniere. I was taking wireless watch, but for the two vehicles, when 13 Baker, which is the ARV, was called up to see to Major Wormwood's tank that had was in trouble, blown the track or, or some problem. And the ARV went up to carry out the recovery together with Sea Squadron ARV. The next thing we heard that Sea Squadron had been hit, Sea Squadron ARV had been hit, and there were casualties on it. And then we didn't hear anything for a little bit more until Captain McMichael, the tech edge, came into where we were and came up to us and said that, I'm sorry to tell you, you haven't got an ARV. C Squadron and B Squadron ARV have both been destroyed. There are fatal casualties. I can't tell you as yet as to who was killed or what's happened. 